Yo, what is going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 19 card review. Today I'm going to be going over 99 overall Christy Mathewson. This card is obtainable through the 10th inning program by getting 200 stars in the program. Or you can buy him off the marketplace. He's currently selling for around 15,000 stubs. So I have to say this is one of the most disappointing cards that I've tried all year. When I first saw this card on paper, I thought he would be absolutely sick. One of the main reasons is that I was a huge fan of the 96 Cy Young card when this game first released, and this card reminded me a lot of that Cy Young card and was actually even better in terms of per nines um, and stuff because the Cy Young didn't have a sinker. Um, he had basically three curveballs instead. So I thought this card would be a better version of Cy Young, and unfortunately I think this card sucks. Um, I tried very hard to make it work, with this card uh, and I think this card sucks for a couple of reasons the first one is the main reason I had so much success with the Cy Young card was because his changeup was nasty um, Cy Young has one of the most underrated changeups in the entire game if we get a Sig Cy Young that card's gonna be disgusting mark my words <laughs> um, this card's changeup is nowhere close to that card's changeup uh, very little movement on this card's changeup also, the addition of the sinker doesn't really help this card uh, because it has almost no movement and there's not much speed differential between the sinker and the fastball. So um, the, his sinker really isn't a good pitch because it doesn't move a lot. Um, so that's one of the reasons why he's not good. Another reason why I think this card is not good is that I think he's really easy to adjust to as a hitter at the plate. So my experience with this card was mostly that I was setting people down one, two, three in the first, that I was allowing maybe one or two base runners in the second and third, but still no runs. And then by the fourth and fifth inning, I was just getting blown up. So um, I think the fact that having basically two curveballs, screwball and 12-6, uh, really limits your sequencing options. And I found myself getting really predictable with this card. So it could have been user error, could have been my fault but I just don't think there's a whole lot of ways to fool people with this card. And I was finding that the deeper I went into the game with this card, the more success people are having against me, which is really disappointing because the number one thing I was excited about with this card was the 125 stamina. Um, so it's kind of counteracts itself, right? You don't want this guy to go too deep in the game because he's gonna get shelled, uh, but his best stat is stamina. So I don't know. Um, definitely wish this card was better. If someone was better at pitching than me, maybe they would find success with this card. Uh, but overall, just didn't have a whole lot of success. I'll show you guys the stats I had with him. They're ugly. <laughs> I gave him six starts, 32 innings. He went 4-1 and because I was hitting like crazy. But his ERA was 8.16. So um, honestly, would not recommend. Let's see the splits. Yeah, righties. Wow, that's really interesting. Righties were hitting almost 500 and lefties were hitting better. That actually makes sense because most of his stuff moves arm side. Huh. I should have looked at this before, but that's really interesting. Yeah, so. <laughs> wow, we just had a revelation together. How about that, chat? Uh, anyways, yeah, 8.16 ERA, that's just gross. Let's stop looking at it because I hate myself now. Um, but overall. <laughs> Did not did not have a good time pitching with this card, and I really wanted to. Um, obviously, this most people. One more thing to say: most people know his windup is incredibly annoying. Uh, so if you didn't know that, this card has a really long, annoying windup. Um, and when using pure analog, it can kind of get frustrating at times. But it work works both ways because the hitter gets frustrated waiting for you to pitch. Also, so if you didn't know that, now you know his windup is incredibly long and obnoxious. So. As always, we'll rate the card how he rates the meta, and we'll rate him compared to how much he costs. How he rates in the meta, I'll give him a B. I honestly don't think this card is that terrible. I just think I was playing a lot of good players, and I was getting shelled mostly because of myself and having inexperience with the card. I'm sure someone could find some way to have success with this card. It just wasn't for me. And for how much he costs, I'll actually give him an A. Um, I've been known to say that starting pitching is some of the most expensive things you can buy on this year's game. Good starting pitching is very expensive. Um, so for only 15 k this actually is a pretty good deal. A 99 overall pitcher that honestly could probably have some success on All-Star with how slow he throws. Um, there are worse things out there than a 99 overall 15,000 stub starting pitcher. So 
I hope this review was helpful for you guys. I personally won't be using this card on my team, but uh, maybe try them out if you want. Um, enjoy the clips after this video and drop a comment if you want me to review anyone specific. I am working on Max Scherzer, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> I cannot land on him. All right, anyways, uh, enjoy the clips like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. What is my rotation? Like on my main squad? Like the best rotation that I usually roll with? I don't know. I change out a lot of guys because I get bored. But I think usually I have Kershaw, Wainwright, Wood, Kluber, Blylevin. Something like that. These are pretty good pitches. This guy just suddenly decided to take everything for no reason. Dot. You like Gwen and you'll be putting Sig Ichiro on the corner. Yeah, if you want to play Belly at first, man, go for it. I mean, Belly is one of those ellipses. I'm locating a lot better this game. Do I like Larkin? I have not had a chance to use him hardly at all. This is basically my debut night with him. But so far, very early on, but no, I haven't liked him. When I saw the card on paper, I thought he looked like Alomar without the switch hitting, so do with that what you will. Oh my god, that bitch was so gross! Ellipsis! And that brings in the former National League Rookie of the Year, Cody Bellinger. Nope. And that misses ball one. Third inning here, already 4-2 our score. Now a ball lined to the left side, but foul. I'm really scared to throw Bellinger down in a way, because I feel like his early swings still go so far. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. I mean, that's a classic case of coming off your backside right there. He lost his entire back. Ellipsis! Lancaster, the second baseman. In there at the letters 0 and 1. Okay. And he misses with it 1 and 1. The 1 1. Here we go to one and two now. Lifted down the line and left. And that will end up a foul ball. The one two. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Now at the plate, Ken Griffey Jr. He'll get to take his first cuts here. In there, no balls and a strike. This guy loves to drop the head on those pitches down and in. I'm shocked he went in there, but he's able to jump ahead and get away with it. Behind 0-2 now, Matthewson has become known as a guy that's tough to take deep. So many starting pitchers find themselves snake-bitten by the gopher.